making big, wide boosts and cuts. Apparently, <laughs> apparently, I can't believe I'm saying this in 2022, apparently, all stock digital EQs, if you use big, wide boosts or cuts, all they do is boost or cut. They have no impact on phase, regardless of how much you boost or you cut, no impact on aliasing whatsoever, and they have no impact on distortion as well. Now, instead of fueling YouTube politics, all I'm going to do is give you the correct facts, and we're going to be done with it. So let's get straight into it. Now, for this example, I'm going to use Kirchhoff EQ and FabFilter Pro Q3. Now, as you can see, I have made a big, like, 8, 9 dB boost at around, like, 3K or whatever. Now, as you can see, both are identical in their curves. And if we switch to the phase response, as you can see, wow, there has been a phase shift. <laughs> Unbelievable, look, and they're both the exact same <gasps> phase shift. Now, if we change that to linear phase, as you can see in the Kirchhoff, the phase is completely linear and we see no change whatsoever. Now, we can also do that in the fab filter as well, switch it to linear phase, and would you look at that, there is a completely flat response. The phase is completely untouched. That's what it means by a linear phase. And if we crank up the gain to like 30 dB, again, it remains linear. It doesn't move at all. Now, as you can see, when you start to bring the gain down, the phase response starts to shift and becomes more linear. So the less gain that you apply, the more flat the phase response is going to be. And it doesn't matter if you are boosting and cutting. As you can see, you've got Kirchhoff boosting and you've got FabFilter cutting. And in this situation, both would cancel each other out because they are both each other's direct opposite. But either way, as you can see, it's quite obvious, the less you boost or cut, the less the phase response will be shifted. The more you boost and cut and the wider you boost and cut, the more the phase response will be shifted. Now, to prove this from an audible aspect, what I have done is I have set four different instances of Kirchhoff. So I've got them all at 10 kilohertz, but they are all boosting differently. And I've also attenuated the output of each accordingly. So every example is played back at the same short term LUFS. And then from there, all I've done is copied each instance onto another track, flipped the phase of each instance and set each to linear phase mode. When they are in linear phase mode, really, <laughs> the nulls speak for themselves. So as you can see and even hear, even the difference of boosting 5 dB compared to boosting 15 dB, there is as much as nearly 11 dB of a difference just caused by the phase shift. All the difference is in the phase. And that just goes to show you how much of a difference there is in the phase response the more you boost and cut. Right, okay, so we can safely say that it is not a myth, it is true, <laughs> right, that is what it is, it's just phase and EQs. Now, there seems to be a little bit of confusion in regards to linear digital EQs. Linear digital EQs are completely clean and they will not distort. Even if you hit like a stock digital EQ and you hit it at 30 dB, 
the only way you're going to get distortion is if you clip the output, right? If you compensate for the gain, like using a trim plugin or within the EQ plugin itself, you are not going to get any level of distortion. However, that doesn't mean that you could just go making very drastic, big, large EQ boosts in the high end going into a non-linear plugin like a compressor or especially a saturation plugin and it not have any effect on the saturation itself and the aliasing that can occur. Now to show you this, I'm going to stick a sweep through a VU meter. Now as you can see with the sweep, it stays at the exact same level, so minus 18 dBFS throughout the entire frequency spectrum. That's why it's called a sweep, okay? Sweeps the entire frequency spectrum at the exact same level. Now look what happens when I add in the Kirchhoff instance that I showed you earlier at plus 15 dB and this is at 10K. What you're going to notice is that the VU meter hits minus 3 dB because I've attenuated minus 3 dB so I can get the overall LUFS to stay close to the original. However, as you can see, you've got plus 15 dB at 10K. So when that bell starts to encroach, as you can see, so does the level. And that there is the level that's going into your non-linear processor, your compressor your saturator, your tape plugin, whatever it is, whatever is making saturation. And because we've added so much high end, what's going to happen is that the non-linear processor is going to make more higher order harmonics, which is then going to hit Nyquist and then going to fold back on itself, which is going to cause aliasing, which I'll show you now by going into the HG2 black box in this particular setting. So as you can see, without running any EQ, into the HG2 black box, there is no aliasing whatsoever. We have a good level of harmonic saturation, but there is no aliasing due to the internal oversampling that is in the HG2 black box. <laughs> However, if we go into the HG2 black box boosting 15 dB at 10k, just look at the amount of aliasing it adds. All of that is audible and it's all been created by a linear digital EQ going in to the HG2. Now, this can be decreased by decreasing the amount of boost at 10K. As you can see, boosting 10K at 10 dB, the aliasing is much less audible. It's still audible, but much less. And then if you make a big wide 5 dB boost at 10K, the aliasing is now practically inaudible. As you can see, all of the aliasing is kind of in the blue region, as you can see, I've got the level set a certain way. So anything that's kind of orangey, that's kind of really where I see it as being audible around like minus 85, minus 80 dB full scale. And there you have it. Yes, making wide, big boosts and cuts. There is a sound and to some, yes, it can have an adverse negative effect. However, however, that doesn't mean to say that you should not make these types of big moves, all right? Think about kick drums, how loads of people make these big wide cuts and take out a lot of like the mud in a kick. Again, think about CLA, like CLA is famed for like cranking 8K on guitars, like using an SSL. If a certain source needs it and it works in the context of the mix, then who cares? However, please be aware that it is not a myth, right? It is true. The more you boost and cut and the wider these boosts and cuts are, you will be bringing in a more audible phase shift. Whether that phase shift is something that you deem as negative, it's subjective to every single engineer. Good linear digital plugins do not make saturation. However, if they are being fed into non-linear processes, then if you are boosting in the high regions, dependent on the saturator, dependent on the non-linear processor, you will be creating more high order harmonics and dependent on the plugin, dependent if it has oversampling or anything like that, you can get aliasing. The amount of aliasing is going to depend on the specific non-linear process and also the amount that you boost and the frequency that you boost as well. At the end of the day, just use your ears, but please remember that the science is the science, fact is fact. And you know what? The two of them don't go together. Science is science, but it doesn't mean that science has to be the thing that kind of forces you to make certain decisions. Use your ears, make your own decisions, and just create awesome mixes.
My name's Paul Third. Hopefully this has been helpful. If it's been helpful, pop a like on the video. If it's been really, really helpful, then consider donating a super thanks. And if you've not subscribed, then please subscribe. And I'll see you again next week.